It is Tuesday, November 2nd. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. And now, a guy who's willing to change his name to Meta for a price, J.P. Shadrick. I'll do a lot of things for a price. And welcome in. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman coming up. We've got a busy show ahead, of course. Busy two hours ahead, in fact. Uh, Jaguars Happy Hour here at 4 o'clock. Jaguars analyst Jeff Logman joins us each Tuesday. We'll recap week eight. We'll put a bow on 31 to 7 Seahawks over the Jaguars. And then we'll look ahead to week nine. It's the NFL. No games are easy, but this one's really tough. The Bills are coming to town. The top team, one of, well, you could argue they're the top team in the AFC right now. The top scoring offense, the number one overall defense, the most takeaways in the league. The Bills come here. We'll take an early look at that one. And then at 5 o'clock, Jaguars Radio Network coverage begins with the Urban Meyer Show from 5 to 6. Head coach Urban Meyer will join us. We'll get his final thoughts on the loss in Seattle and some of the early work looking ahead to the Buffalo Bills. Jeff Lagerman with us now. Good afternoon to you, Jeff. What's up, man? It's all good, JP. It's all good, except for the film. <laughs> that is not good. It, it's mostly good, except for the film. Uh, it, was a, it was a tough game. Yes, it was. And uh, you kind of got into, uh, I think, you know, the the bye week doldrums coming back, mm-hmm. trying to find your groove of coming back. And then you got a West Coast trip. You put those two together. And I think you can have a recipe for poor performance, and that's exactly what they had. Why is that? I mean, it's a bye week. You should come back refreshed and ready and and eager to go. You got guys coming off the injury list, and and let's go. Let's play some ball, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is the in theory that sounds great, but the reality is is that when you uh, encounter a bye week, sometimes you get healthy and you get better. But it's not like this team was beat up that much before the bye week. But the reality is, is that you get out of your routine. Mm. And so sometimes when you get out of your routine, you're like, okay, you have a little bit of a hard time finding your groove. And then next thing you know, you're traveling to the West Coast on a Friday. And now the routine is even disrupted a little bit more because you're traveling on a Friday. And so it's just different. And uh, I had a I had a bad feeling about this game. And it came to fruition. The offense struggled, the defense struggled, and the penalties came back as well. Miscommunication return. That was a real key back in the week one loss, of course, to Houston. Urban Meyer addressed it all on Monday. We also had a turnover, and a turnover is negated by a penalty. Just lack of discipline, sloppy play. You had the 12-man issue where uh, one penalty and one timeout. You know, I needed that. We needed that timeout. So we have to get that corrected. I was really upset about that. That should never happen. Uh, so we addressed that today. Um, and then offense, you had uh, the delay of games, which is very uncharacteristic of Trevor. And, and so we just got to give him more opportunities to practice and, and, uh, and get the plays in faster. I mean, it's a cumulative. It's not just Trevor. It's the, you know, and then also the substitution of receivers would cause to that as well. So, so you just, yeah, I'm very upset about that. That's, that's not uh, winning football doesn't have 12 penalties. 12 penalties, 93 yards, and uh, as you heard him discuss there, and I'm, I'm sure we'll we'll ask him about this in the Urban Meyer show coming up a little later and see if they've delved into it a little further. The 12 men on the field followed up by nearly another 12 men on the field before the snap. They had to call a timeout to avoid a second one in a row. Yeah, that's, there's, no, there's no excuse oh, for that. Oh, man. So, and and, and here, here's the reality. He talked about, Urban talked about the turnover that was negated by a penalty. I don't think Geno Smith throws that ball unless he realizes that it's a penalty. So in reality, it's not like he really got a takeaway. So Geno's being aggressive hey, throwing the ball the toward the end he's zone because Aaron he Rogers. knows yeah. that he's got Kayla Von Chase on offside. Aaron Rodgers play. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, that's not, that's not really a fair assessment of that. But I think the disappointing thing is that you had two roughing the passer calls where you finished the quarterback into the, into the turf. They were the right call. Totally correct calls. Yeah, according to the rules. Okay, yes. Devon Hamilton and, and Jihad Ward, totally guilty. Mm-hmm. You got a taunting penalty by Rayshon Jenkins. That's his second one, I think, of the year. It is. So uh, 12 men on the field back-to-back, no excuse for that. I, I think the disappointing thing is that throughout the game, you had kind of something bad happen, whether it be every offensive series or 
every defensive series. And you had a couple series where something bad didn't happen, but I make notes during the game, and you've got the roughing call on Devon Hamilton. You had a uh, two drives later, the interception by Diggs. They're t- very talented safety, by the way. He's a really good football player because he had a miscommunication by Tavon Austin and, and Trevor Lawrence. Then uh, you have a taunting by Rayshon Jenkins right on downs. You've got 12 men on the field twice, which also has Caleb on Chase on offsides on that same drive. I mean, there's just so many different things that, that you go, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, it's just – It's a lot of noise. It's a sheet. bad day yeah. at the office. Yeah. There's no two ways about it. And it's one that you certainly say bad performance by the players – and then you also have to say that's not a very good performance by the coaching staff either. And, and I'll say this, mm-hmm. the, the thing that I did not like at the end of the game, you score a touchdown, you kick the extra point, and then you go for two. And I know that Coach talked about side, it in right. his press conference yeah, yeah. and said that, uh, look, it was an opportunity at getting reps. So let, let me just say this about that. When you score a touchdown – you go for two, so then it be, still can be, and if you get that, then you can still keep it a two-possession game. It's a 16-point game, right? That's correct. So then you can go for the onside kick. Mm-hmm. You don't kick the extra point, still have a three-possession game, and then choose to do the onside kick because you want to practice it. Because here's the reality. That's the most dangerous play in football is the onside kick. You don't practice the most dangerous play in football because you want to try it out or you want to try to steal another possession on offense. If, you go, if you're going to do that, you have to go for two before that. If you make it going for two, okay, it's two score then you game, go for the onside kick. The onside, and if you get it, okay, if you don't, If you don't convert the two-point conversion, then you do not attempt an onside kick just to steal a possession. Mm. It becomes absolutely for no reason at that point. They got, I mean, and guys are putting their bodies out there, and you know, well, it's probably why you can't JP. I, I, you know, it's probably why you had the return for the touchdown on the onside kick, right? D- did you get the impression that guys were throwing their bodies around no. on this onside kick? <laughs> no. At that not point, at because the score is what it is, I mean, there's going to be guys making a business decision. They're not going to put their head in there and go dive after the football, right? No, I mean. No, Both, that's, either that's, side, really. That's why the running back, and uh, it was Travis Homer yep. who ended up taking it all the way back for a touchdown. Hmm. And so, anyway, I just wanted to give you my thoughts on that because right, so, I wanted to volunteer it. So, how do you, for lack of a better term, circle the wagons again, you know, get the coaching staff and players back on the same page and eliminate a lot of these communication things? You said it's. Yeah, players when they're on the field, as Tony Baselli said last night, hey, if you're the 12th guy, you got to look around, hey, you're in my spot, and talk to each other and get off the field. Somebody's got to leave. Or, and at what point does that become, hey, the coaches can only go so far on the field, but you still have to coach them, coach that out of them. Like, there's a balance there. I thought it was, it was kind of comical when you watch the film back, okay, and they've got 12 guys on the field, and you had an extra defensive lineman. Okay. okay, so and I think it was Jihad Ward. He's he's literally he went from the left side of the defensive line to the right side, and he's like, "Where am I going to play?" I mean, they're all they're all taken. So it was kind of funny. It wasn't funny, but it was funny because <laughs> yeah, you're, you're watching, and he's trying to figure out where he can play. Uh, wow. Wait, wait a minute! I'm one of the defensive linemen out here. Uh, where 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 can I line up? And he, there was nowhere for him to line up. So eventually, he just puts his hand down and it becomes a, a five down lineman situation and you're just going oh. and then you have the timeout and then you you it's happening again. I mean that that was like you gotta be kidding me moment. Uh what's the old airline airline commercial you want to get away? <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. You, you know? It's one of those. Or Calgon, take me away. It's one of those. It's, those that is that is definitely one of those moments. Hey, by the way, the uh, trade deadline was 4 o'clock and no word of anything from the Jaguars. So uh, quiet at the deadline for the Jags. Today. So a couple of the big trades. Ingram left Pittsburgh to go to Chiefs, Chiefs. Kansas City. That's right. And then Von Miller goes uh, to the Rams. That's the big one, yes. Wow. That's a big one. 
for a second and a, a third. Second and a th- that's all they have left, by the way. All the other ones the are Rams gone. The Rams don't believe in draft picks. The Rams are going all in right now. And after a couple, three, four years, if they don't win it, it won't matter anyway for the, I can the guy pulling the trigger I can tell on you less. This. Well, that's less need. That's right. And less need is, uh, in fact, less need was. Who's here? He was here back in 95, and Les Snead was essentially an errand guy, which he would do different things in scouting, you know, and uh, and he's a nice guy, and uh, but he got a start here, was willing to do anything, and now he's the general manager of the Rams, and, and he has, uh, him and the coach have done a very good job. And I will say, when I say very good job, I think that's subject to interpretation, but you can't argue with the results. But some people would say you're not doing it in building the team to to make it lasting. No, they're trying to win. Like they're trying now. to win now. I mean, they, they they thought they were about a quarterback away, so they went and got the quarterback in the trade, uh, Stafford, and now getting the pass rusher in. I mean, he's, you put Aaron he's, his, his contract's up at the end of the year. Von if, Miller, if Von Miller. Rental. If he if he gets back to being Von Miller, which he can still do that, mm-hmm. and you put him out on the field with Aaron Donald together, mm-hmm. holy cow! And then the back end of that defense too, with Jalen running oh. around doing all that. Yeah, I mean, that's oh. tough. Hey, guess what? The Jags get to play them in about five weeks' time in L.A. Oh. Oh. So we got that going for us. <laughs> <laughs> the SoFi will, Stadium and Von Miller. I will Miller tell you this: <laughs> I have I have never. I've never seen a more dominant defensive player in the National Football League in a long time now. I mean, Von, I'm talking – When Vaughn's on. I'm talking – no, 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 no. I'm talking about Aaron Donald. Oh, Donald, yes, yes. He can take over the whole – I'm saying different. you, you got to go yeah. – as a defensive lineman now, yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to go back to the Bruce Smith, the Reggie White, the – and he's better than John Randall – you know, I mean, John Randall's great now. Yeah, I mean, those guys are, are edge guys, though. Donald's inside. No, 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 no. John Randall was an inside okay. guy. All he right. was a little old three technique, kind of like Aaron Donald is, yeah. because when Aaron Donald was coming out, I was looking at his his measurables going, you know, I don't know about this guy being able to do it. Oof. And uh, yeah, he's doing he's it. like the best in the league, and he's one of the best ever. I mean, this guy, is a, he's a walking gold jacket shoe-in, Aaron, Aaron Donald is. There's no doubt about that. So – for the Jaguars to have to figure out how to block Aaron Donald, that's going to be a huge challenge for them in that game, then no he, doubt. And then you throw Vaughn on the outside, and yeah, here we go. Um, by the way, that game is uh, coming up at SoFi Stadium December 5th. Okay, first so we'll week have of December. About the you know December 1st or so, we'll have plenty of time on this program to go over those matchups because <laughs> – um, there are a lot to dissect in that. Anyway, picture. anyway, that's down the line a little bit. Um, if you know this didn't seem just going into the last week or so like a, a team that would really be too active, unless there was somebody out there that you could get for not just this year, but two or three years down the line to that's stay. That's the around. hard part. That's, that's that's the hard part. Those I mean, guys it, don't come around uh, and are, aren't available too often. Trent Balky and Urban Meyer are, are trying. You know, you, and you always try to do this. You try to build something that's sustainable. And what sustainable means is that whoever you acquire, that they're going to be available not just for 2021, they're going to be available for next year, 2022, and then also 2023. And so I think that's part of factoring in whether you want to get a guy in the trade before the trade deadline. Yeah. Typically, the it's a seller's market when you're talking about the trade deadline. If you had Von Miller, would you, and he's on a one-year deal, I mean, don't you think the Denver Broncos did pretty good getting a second and a third? Yeah, because who knows if we're gonna, really going to re-sign him at the end of the year. He's I mean, a free agent. I, yeah, that's a really, I mean, so it, it's a perfect example yeah. of it being a seller's market. Sure. And from the Rams' perspective, they're in the hunt. They need to win. We can afford this rental. That's rebel. typically who... I don't want to say that they view it as that. That's typically, if you're in that position, then you view that you maybe make a trade like that. Mm -hmm. But if you're not, you've got to get a guy that's going to give you some type of commitment beyond this year. You know, that's going to, like I said, help you in the next couple years, not just this year. So, and that's that's hard to find sometimes. And then if you do find a guy that a team is willing to trade for, there is typically. 
there's something there that hasn't made that player as loved. You know what I mean? As far as there's something wrong. There's some kind of, I don't know what you would call it, some type of glaring wart or whatever you want to call it <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. the player has. If I mean, because look, that's – and not all players have that. They're not all covered up in or warts. Maybe it's just not a full organizational fit. You know, sometimes it's just okay. Let's move on from said player and and start over. Eh, hey, yeah, so, for exa- give you, give an example. Yeah. Okay, C.J. Henderson was traded. Correct. Okay. Perfect example. He has he has a blemish. Mm-hmm. Okay, the reports were that coach and and one of the defensive coaches went to his house. To talk to him. They confirmed those reports, by which, the way. But yeah. yeah, which they were talking to him supposedly about because he didn't want to play ball anymore. And has he played that well for Carolina since the He's trade? He's been inactive a lot. Uh, we got Dan Arnold out of that trade. That's right. Producing every week. So I, I think my point about that is is that if, if there's a guy that's willing to be traded, two things. Because Von Miller doesn't have any blemishes on him. I mean, he's a great player. But the only drawback to him from the Denver Broncos' perspective is how many more years can he play at the level that he's at? Can can you make it work from a cap perspective? And what is the team that wants him willing to give us? They value a second and a third round pick more than they value a player who only has this year left on his deal. Well, especially the way if wherever they are in the standings right now. I mean, Denver is, you know, last play. They're four and four. And they're chasing Vegas and the Chargers. I mean, it's a tight division, but no guarantees. Right. Let's come back. Um, deep defense for the Jaguars. We'll get into what happened this past week. Geno Smith, your guy, was hot, red hot, white hot to start the game. Yeah, well, uh, he must have listened to the pregame show. That's why he might have. And if you were all over him, I just said he's not a very good quarterback. Well, he heard that. He took it personally. Still not. We'll get into that coming up. PRI Productions, the official event production company of the Jags, has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIProductions.com. And this is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by Dream Finders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. And by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com at Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the Year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. Hey, Jaguars fans, it's always game on with Duncan's $2 medium hot or iced coffee Tuesdays for rewards members. The NFL season is more than just what happens on game day. That's why Duncan wants to get you through the game week, too. During football season, the best call is always Duncan. Whether it's the morning after a late night game or getting hyped for the week to come, pick up a cup of your favorite coffee and tackle the day with Duncan. Join today and order ahead of the Duncan app. Jacksonville Jaguars run on Duncan. Exclusions apply. Participation may vary. Limit one per week. So, it's happy hour. 
Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at local liquor stores, restaurants, and the Jaguar Stadium. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinder specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. In this league, that should never happen. You know what I mean? There's, there's, there's no excuse for that. There's no response. We have to have better communication coming off the field. And obviously, it's, it's a hectic environment. You know, there's D linemen that are locked in trying to get the play, and then this guy's running on. So it's got to be a communication thing where if you are running on the field, you have to call out. You got to go one for one. You can't just run on the field and just say, hey, it's my turn to play. So it's a lot of things. You know what I mean? It's, t- it's the timing of the substitutions. Um, it's, it's players not communicating when they come in. So it's, it's a total thing, and it's such an easy thing to fix. You know what I mean? It's not like it's something hard. Like when you, when you, you know, raise your hand when you're running in, and you know who you're supposed to grab. We're going from um, base, per- jag personnel to nickel personnel. Whoever the nickel is, he's got to go run and grab the Sam. Like everybody knows what they're supposed to do. We're just not doing it. So it's on us. That's Miles Jack after the game in Seattle this past Sunday, and Jaguars happy hour continues. Hard Rock Sportsbook must be 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522-4700. Presenting sponsor of the Jaguars Digital Network. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reaver. Glad you're along with us today on Jaguars happy hour. That's Miles, of course, talking about the 12 men on the field penalty in the near next one. We've gone through that. Um, you know, coverage issues were there again. There was all this talk about, oh, we're going to play more zone now. And, you know, they still it felt like they were the Lockett and Metcalf were just running open a lot of times. Well, Lockett got separation, particularly when he was being covered in man with Tyson Campbell. I mean, look, Lockett's a great player. I mean, he's uh, one of the top five guys in the National Football League at yards per catch. He's got great speed, elite speed. So does Tyson Campbell, but he ran away from Tyson and got separation. So, and then when the Jaguars played zone, he's pretty crafty about finding the opening. And that's, uh, he's a great player. And what has happened prior to this game against the Jaguars, Tyler Lockett hadn't gotten really much of a connection with Geno Smith. No. In fact, the numbers, with it, which is kind of ridiculous, in the last five games, Tyler Lockett had only had 159 yards receiving and no touchdowns. In the first couple games of the season, he had 278 yards and three touchdowns. And so there was no connection with, with Geno. But, uh, you know, it's just – it's hard for a defense. And I think the Jaguars coaching staff – and personnel probably over-evaluated, or should I say, I don't know another way to put this, they overvalued what they had in the back end. At the start of the year, you're saying? At the start yeah, of the year. The, as the, when the roster was set, okay, we are set with these guys, and here's why, right. And obviously that changed a little bit with, with CJ. Yeah. Right. And then you have a rookie who's clearly struggling and Tyson Campbell, but it's hard to go from – Okay, all of off season, all of training camp, we're we're prepared to play man. We're going to play man, right. and you're practicing man, and you're practicing, you know, the the blitzes and the pressures and all that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden, now you've said, well, you know, we got to be more zone. It's probably a little bit easier to go from zone to man because it's easier to practice or better to practice something that you got even with zone it's you, less. Just you have of, to relate to yeah. what the routes are in a zone. There you go. And yeah. man, it's man. You're just chasing the guy around. 
Right. So, and if that man is better than your man, then that man's going to win the man on. Man. So, I mean, in hindsight, which hindsight's always twenty twenty. I mean, I'm not trying to to criticize the coaching staff or the personnel staff here, but maybe with hindsight, and hindsight for everybody, you would have said, you know what, let's let's maybe just try to be balanced, and that way we're practicing both, and then we'll see where we go. If 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 we feel like we're playing pretty well, and we feel like we can play more man, then we'll mm-hmm. we'll play a little bit more man. If we feel like we're not quite good enough talent wise and we'll play a little bit more zone and that's okay. But it didn't happen like that. They came out practicing a lot of man. But that look, it's uh Rome wasn't built overnight now. You know, and the the disappointing thing is though is that, you know, they're talking about rebuild. That term's been used now this week. And in the off season you signed a safety, you signed a corner and free agency and then you drafted a safety mm-hmm. and you drafted a corner. Mm-hmm. So I mean the rebuild is – I mean, you're right in the middle of it, but, I mean, you would you were hoping for better results now. Those should be kind of cornerstones of the rebuild at, at some point. Well, you if hope. You're putting you that know, kind of equity into it. You them. hope, and, and, and they got a ways to go. You know, they got a ways to go. I mean, Tyson's got a lot of growth to make. To make. And, I, and I think he'll make it. I think he's – first of all, he works hard. He's got, the, he's got the physical tool bag. He's just got to learn to play the ball better. Mm-hmm. Can he do that at the level where you want him to be? I mean, that's 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 an interesting question because when like when you watch Josh Allen, when Josh Allen plays the game, he's very aware of the ball and he finishes uh, really well. Is this something that you either have or you don't? Mm. And I've said this before: the finish in the ball awareness sometimes is something that confidence will help build that, experience will help build that. But then in some cases, you either have it or you don't. Yeah. Uh, Bucky Brooks on uh, our Wednesday show on Jaguars.com a couple times has said, you know, sometimes if somebody has like a, a baseball or basketball background, when you have to play the ball, if you play outfield, right? Mm-hmm. Depth, ball's coming at you, you got to figure out. I never could figure that out, right, as a kid. But like, you know, you have to figure out how, where the ball's coming and play the ball. Right. Basketball, you're getting rebounds, same idea. So a lot of times scouts will think about that background when they're going after a corner-type player to evaluate his ability to go get the ball. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's much of a background of that with Tyson, whatever, but uh, whether you played it or not, some guys have it and never played those sports. So either uh, it may or may not be coachable. You know, the, two, the two toughest positions, I think, in the NFL for a rookie, quarterback, clearly. I mean, it's just, I mean, look, you're you're going to take some lumps. I mean, even when you're the first overall pick in the draft. I mean, yeah. go back and you look at all the the Aikman, Pey- Peyton Mannings, the John Elways. I mean, you name it. Every guy that was picked first overall has had struggles for the most part. I don't know if is there a first overall pick quarterback that hasn't struggled. I mean, everybody's got some. Andrew mm-hmm. Luck. I mean, I'm he trying to think in. of how he was his rookie year, but I mean. And then the other position is corner. Yeah. Because you're out on an island. Yeah, and they got veteran guys running routes against you and picking on you, and the, the veteran quarterbacks are picking on you and everything. In college football, if you were Tyson Campbell or, or, or corner at any major college football program, mm-hmm. how many guys did you go against that were going to play in the NFL? And I'm not talking about somebody that plays for Alabama. Because in practice, you were going to face every day you're doing guys that, right? that were going to play in the NFL Which every day. Is part of the deal. But uh, it, it kind of depends on the, on the schedule, right? Right. But, I mean, you know, let's say you're in a – SEC, right? Georgia yeah. has some some offenses and some players. You know, and every once in a while I'll have a guy. Um, Florida will have a guy every once in a while. But, right? the, but the hard part when you make the transition to the National Football League at corner is that, okay, the – the level of talent that you're facing is what you have never seen yet. And it's every week. And it's every week. Yeah. But then you also have to add in the complex complexities of understanding your game plan. So now you're trying to learn what you're supposed to do against a great player. That's not easy to do. You know, so what we're seeing is exactly that with Tyson Campbell. We're seeing a young player struggle. And he's just got to continue to work and bring the lunch pail and continue to work to get better. And I think he will because I think he's built that way.
Our final thought on the Jaguars' defense versus the Seahawks' offense. Geno Smith started the game with 14 consecutive completions, the longest streak to start a game by any quarterback in the National Football League this season. And he finished with a career-high completion percentage, 83%, 20 of 24 passing for only 195 yards. He did throw a couple touchdowns. It was all efficient. That was his halftime numbers? That was his game. That was the end of game numbers. Well, I mean, you might as well have said that that was his half. I mean, what was Yeah, he didn't do much in the Tell second Tell me what half. he did. Do you have the half oh, numbers yeah, by the chance? I half numbers. Stand by. Stand and the reason by, that, that I asked that, because Seattle totally took their foot off the gas pedal at halftime. He was 14 of 15 at half. I, I, 137. I you're right. He t- they they took right. their foot off the gas pedal. Well, I, I mean, they're up three scores. And, you know, and they like, had the ball coming two, back. T- two possessions into the second half they'd scored again and what did it go 24, 24 nothing 24 to nothing and at that point Seattle said okay we're just gonna hand the ball off and I think they had <laughs> three straight run plays of the next drive the next to, drive. Penny, to Penny right yeah that's right <laughs> so yeah. I know that you know the defense made some comments that you know they felt good about their second half level of play but I mean, I mean was it wasn't was, the same was Seattle I don't think they were concerned at that point. I don't think so either. It didn't feel like because their defense was dominating the Jaguars' offense. I mean, that was that was a struggle for the Jaguars' offense, and and we talked about it before the game. We talked about it during the game, and that Seattle's defense. If you look at their rankings, you're looking at the wrong thing. And the reason I we say that is because in the first five weeks of the season, Seattle was terrible. They had, they, no team in the league had given up more yards than the Seattle Seahawks defense. I want to say it was the tune, and I wrote it down, 400, over 450 yards a game. Mm. But in the last couple games prior to facing the Jaguars, they were only allowing 18 points a game. Mm. The last four games going into the Jaguars game, they were the number one defense in the National Football League at third down percentage allowed. Their takeaways were – getting better. They have two, I'm talking, great players. Bobby Wagner in that game yeah, right. was incredible. Yeah. Okay. Jamal Adams. Yeah, he's a good player. Was incredible. Good player, yeah. And the Jaguars got dominated by that defense. That was the story of the game. When Trevor Lawrence looks like he's lost and throwing bad balls and then he's having used timeouts because – that's just something that we haven't seen out of that offense. Well, let's come back and delve into that a little bit more. James Robinson banged up in the game. Might have changed some of the idea um, that they had on offense. And as you said, Trevor Lawrence threw the ball 54 times. That's not ideal. Not ideal for any quarterback, much less a, ro- a rookie. <laughs> Check out the official Jaguars podcast network. It's a free subscription on Apple iTunes or Spotify or wherever you download pods. Give us that five-star rating as always. And this is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is brought to you by TIAA Bank. Turn potential into progress. And by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing workforce solutions companies in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI has the resources necessary to scale with any enterprise, yet they are small enough to maintain the agility, personal service, and remarkable experience they've become known for over the past three decades. 
This is your workforce and your business reimagined. Visit csicompanies.com to learn more. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Are you suffering from shoulder pain? If you have clicking and popping in the shoulder joint, persistent pain that intensifies with use, an inability to lift your arm over your head, or a tingling, burning sensation in the shoulder, elbow, or wrist, waiting to see a doctor could make your injury worse. Baptist Health and Jacksonville Orthopedic Institute have innovative and effective treatment options available right now to relieve your pain and restore your mobility. Don't wait. Call 904-JOI-2000. Jacksonville Sports Talk for Jacksonville sports fans. 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think it just goes to show um, if you don't come out and ready to play and you don't play well, this can happen to anybody any week. You know, it doesn't matter who you're playing. You just got to gotta play well, and, and we did it, so... I think that's the. It's not you know it's not concerning obviously for for me it's not. Um, I just because I'm in that locker room I'm you know with all those guys and you see how hard we work and how we prepare and um, I know probably from the outside looking in it might be but it's it's not concerning it's just we played like crap today and that's gonna happen every now and then and um, but can't let this happen again for sure. That's pretty straightforward from Trevor Lawrence, Jaguars quarterback, after the loss in Seattle this past Sunday. And welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. Coming up at 5 o'clock, the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. We'll hear from the Jaguars head coach, get his final thoughts on the loss in Seattle, and then look ahead to the Buffalo Bills coming up. Jaguars game day broadcasts are presented by Vistar Credit Union. And the Jaguars will face the Bills this week. Well, as we said, we'll get to that a little bit later. The top team, you could argue they are the top team in the AFC coming in uh, next week. We touched on the offense at the end of that last uh, little bit there. You know, Trevor Lawrence was forced to throw 54 times in the game. James Lawrence banged up. Oh, uh, James Lawrence. James Robinson, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I said Trevor and James and Robinson and Lawrence. Uh, James Robinson with a, a bruised let heel. Let that one simmer for yeah. a minute. James Lawrence. JP actually made a mistake. I did. I did. And I own it. Hashtag own it. Um, a bruised heel. Day to day for James Robinson. When he left the game, you know, hey, that, that kind of changed the whole feel of what they were trying to do. Totally changed it. I mean, literally. And, and you could see that. Uh, the Seattle defense, I think, respected the running game a little bit less. I mean, that's how good James Robinson is. And and I know that Urban has a, you know, a history with Carlos Hyde, and, and they feel pretty confident with him, but the reality is he is not James Robinson. Not. I mean, the NFL is about talent. And if you don't have your best talent out there, it's hard to be at your best. And when James went out, I thought it was a sig- significant loss. He is, he is their best player on offense, and it's not even debatable. At some point, Trevor Lawrence may be the best player, but right now he's not. And for a young quarterback, you've got to have a great offensive rushing attack, and James Robinson gives them their best chance at that. So to not have him, I mean, that was crushing. And I, and, I, and I think the one thing that kind of ticked me off a little bit, mm. first of all, it was a very legal push by Bobby Wagner on the sideline. Inbounds. Inbounds, and it wasn't over the top or anything of that nature. 
But where was, I mean, the Seahawks bench, man, to catch the guy. Don't just like open up part the sea no, so he can go flying into the bench or something. I mean, somebody just catch the guy. Profes- have a little professional courtesy. Well, hey, that's what it is. And I and- say that because he's a Jaguar. But now, if somebody, if Miles Jack pushes a Seahawk on the Jaguar's bench, I'm saying, get out of the way. Stay, let him go. Of course you are. <laughs> right. Those teal go- t- colored glasses you got on. So, uh, you know. All right, so the longest play on offense was 17 yards, and it was the pass in the flat to James Robinson and yes. run after Which goes catch. to show you how good he is. The next longest play was 14 yards. That was a run. Mm-hmm. So nothing down the field at all. Who had to run? James Robinson. Oh. Ja- not James Lawrence. Oh. James Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> after that, I mean, they just had no, nobody open down the field. Now, when they did, they either dropped the ball or it was out of bounds or whatever the case may there, be. There really is is, I mean, they're missing they're missing the vertical aspect oh, of yeah. the passing I mean, So, and we know that we've talked about that for weeks. Yeah, but here, but here, it's going to be what it is. They didn't trade for any new guys. Well, so. look, it, that doesn't factor into the equation. You have to still you still have to have a vertical element to your game, and the reason why is that because. If you have the vertical element, it makes the area bigger that the defense has to cover. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. See what I'm saying? I, I see. I'm using my Doug Marone I see. Quote. See I what see. I'm saying? I see. Yes, I do. You know what I'm saying? What are we doing? <laughs> it's another Dougism. <laughs> but it, what it does is it, it makes the defense honor the back part of the field, and it opens up the windows everywhere from there to closer back to the line of scrimmage. And right now they really don't have a vertical element to their passing game. And and they you know look at it, it's not just because DJ Chark is on injured reserve because he wasn't just the answer there. But they have kept guys on this roster because they supposedly had great speed. Okay? And where is that speed at? I mean look Tyron Johnson Active in the game. Supposedly has great speed. Mm-hmm. We haven't seen anything vertical with him. You've got James, uh, Jamal Agnew who has – he's a separate. He gets great separation. He's got speed. I mean, I, I, you want to see something to where the receivers are running go routes, which the go routes are just – Straight down the field. They go. And the reason that go routes have to be a part of the game, it, it stretches the defense out, number one, and it makes defenses honor that. And then when you throw the ball on go routes, a couple things can happen. Hey, you might get a completion. You might. That'd be good. Sure. A second thing is that you maybe get an interference call. That'd be also nice. Just as Um, good. Right. And then the other thing could happen is that you could be an incompletion and no penalty, and that's okay. Okay. and that's Line up again, play play again. Or it could be intercepted. That'd be bad. That could be bad. But, I mean, I think that that's, that's... But that's three good things and one bad thing. That's part of why, I mean, I mean, Al Davis, God rest his soul, Al Davis always believed in the vertical element oh, yeah. of the game. I mean, that was... And he, I mean, he, he gave the marching orders to his personnel guys, his coaching staff. The ball must be thrown deep. <laughs> and that's... And he was right. I mean, he was totally right. And that's in the 70s. Even Bill Walsh, yeah. who had this controlled passing attack, had the vertical element to it. John Taylor. Okay, it wasn't just Jerry Rice on slants mm-hmm. and little crossing routes. John Taylor was a guy that could go. So even Bill Walsh had a vertical element to his passing game. And in this offense, in the last couple games, we haven't seen – a lot of that vertical element. That's in fact that's a note that I've made after like the last three games. I was where, say, I've heard this before. Where's the vertical element to the so, passing attack? I mean, do you? Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, do you work it in? I mean, work it more in the game plan. Maybe it's in the game plan and it's covered, and they just can't make the throw downfield. You know? I mean, okay. Well, at some point, you can't force it into three defenders, right? Well, I haven't watched the tape, but like, I mean. Are they? Is it there? Are they trying? To? They're, they're not. They're not trying as much. Okay. I think as as you probably would like, and especially when you. And here's the thing that's going to be more difficult going forward. 
most of your deep routes or vertical aspect of the passing game, and not always, but the the percentages are more from play action. So now all of a sudden, if you're missing your best running back, Oof, yeah, that threat, and the most respected part of mm-hmm. your running game, nobody's going to run downhill and chase the fake. Now what happens? Yeah. What happens to mm-hmm. that play action where you're trying to take shot down the field? Well, uh, 10 more games to figure something out on that side. We'll uh, come back in a moment and talk about the AFC South. Uh, is it uh, is it out of control now? Do the Titans have it, or does the injury to Derrick Henry change matters? Great question. We'll find out. Great question. But we'll talk about it when we come back. If you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further than Ford F-150. It's loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between. And this truck makes tough look easy. No wonder it's the official truck of the NFL and proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. The Baptist Health Injury Report as well when we come back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com Hi folks, Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern Pit Barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Ready to take the next step toward the ultimate you. Dr. Patrick Basil, official plastic surgeon of the Jacksonville Jaguars, presents the ultimate you sweepstakes. Enter for a chance to win a cool sculpting treatment package valued at $4,500, plus a Jaguars performance training session. Receive your free customized treatment in a relaxed, modern, patient-centered environment. Learn more and enter the sweepstakes at jaguars.com slash ultimate you or call 904-222-6262. Terms and conditions apply. No purchase necessary. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field and Valley Park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty Zencog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow. Because safety doesn't happen by accident. Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. The station that the Jaguars listen to, 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Very frustrating. It's something we worked, you know, even over the bye week. And it, it, we got better, but... You know, that's demoralizing. You go on the road and the offense moves the ball. We punt. You know, that would have been good to down it inside the five. We've been really good at that and make them go to the field. It goes in the end zone and they take it down the field and score. And then uh, score again. So, 
Uh, Gino had a, he's a streaky player, and he was streaky at first. I mean, there was times we even had a guy doubled and he snuck one in there. Um, but those are two good receivers, and we got to play better. And, and uh, But we played, you know, the tail of two halves on defense. That's head coach Urban Meyer earlier this week, and welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. We'll hear from head coach Urban Meyer on the Urban Meyer Show. Oddly enough, that's at 5 o'clock on the Jaguars Radio Network. Every Tuesday. Hello, Logs. Well, the special teams that he talks about and uh, what wasn't very good. Uh, the first drive play he's referring to, you got a really nice punt by Logan Cook and an opportunity with Rudy Ford to catch the ball at the five. Oh, yeah, yeah. So here's a great chance to back up Seattle, play some field position, because if you can get great field position like that, then it kind of it can tip the scales for field position throughout the game, oh, yeah. or at least throughout the, the near future. And he doesn't catch it. It bounces, hits the ground, and rolls into the end zone. So now you lose, you lose 15 yards in field position there. You had a uh, illegal formation on a punt. Chappelle Russell lined up too deep. He's a tackle. He's got to be on the line of scrimmage. That's a mental error. I mean, when you can't get lined up properly, then that's a mental error. You can't have that. I mean, that's. I mean, that one there. I think you got to say, hey, that falls on coaching. And then you had a, a penalty on the kick return, which backed the Jaguars up to the eight. That was, I think, right prior to that penalty on Chappelle Russell. And then at the end, you know, you have the onside kick, which is questionable even to do that. We've talked about that. But then you allow that to be returned for a touchdown. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was not a good day for special teams, and it was not a good day for the offense in particular. Veterans, choose VA for the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. And let's take a look now at the Baptist Health Injury Report. Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Uh, Urban Meyer on Monday talked about James Robinson's uh, heel injury. Said it's day-to-day. We'll see. The Jags did claim Divino Zigbo off waivers. They've had him here before. We'll see moving ahead what Robinson's feeling is. But uh, it's a long schedule ahead. Yeah, you know, do you want to throw him out there right away? Do you want to give him another week and just make sure? I think oh, Zigbo? A, no, no, no. Uh, James Robinson with the injury. I mean, well, you, look, I mean, look, that's all going to be a medical decision. Sure. You know, so but we'll, even if it's a question at all, you sit him down, right? If it's, oh, I can go, I'm 75%, do you let him go? Yeah, the 75% is not good enough. I don't think so. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That's, uh, and he'll say he's good. it's just his personality, I'm you know, guessing. And here's the thing. I mean, I, look, they say he'll bruise, but uh, here's the reality. You don't have to reveal exactly what it is. I mean, it, it can be a plantar fasciitis, and you say he'll bruise. Because, I mean, in reality, that could – you got heel pain, and you got inflammation there, so you could say, well, that's a heel bruise. I mean, you just don't know – exactly what it is but i will tell you this you've got a running back and he's got a foot problem that's where it all begins for that's not good backs. that's right i mean that's like the worst injury that you can have if you're a running back or if you're a, a skill position player is a foot injury hmm. i mean last time i checked you gotta run that's and part that's what the type the, the name of the position is a, running you back. need a foot to run you need actually you probably need a couple of them I, I just hope he's okay because James is such a such a good player, you know. And he's he like I said, he's the best player. I said this before, he's the best player that they have on offense. Not even close. Urban also earlier said this week that you know Linder's getting closer. Uh, you know the, the, the MCL is healed. How many now? weeks has that been now? Oh, with Linder, gosh. what was that game injury Three wise? Weeks, four weeks. It was against Cincinnati, right? Yeah, they said the MCL is better now, but it's the the high ankle stuff. So that, that was, issue. I mean, if. One, Titans two, game. three. Titans. Titans game? Yeah. Three three weeks ago. Yeah. And he had what was reported to be a knee and then high ankle. That's right. Okay. High ankles are four to six. That's right. That's that's the what's remaining according to Urban on Monday. Yeah. So, so that's right. gonna be he's gonna be a while. Let's take a look at the AFC South and start with the results from this past weekend. And of course we know what happened in Seattle. The Seahawks over the Jaguars thirty one seven. Overtime game in Indy. The Tennessee Titans get an interception off Carson Wentz in overtime and set up the game-winning field goal, 34-31 the final. And then Derrick Henry with a foot injury surgery out indefinitely. And the Rams, of course, 
We're up 38-0 on the Texans. The Texans scored 22 fourth-quarter points to uh, make the score closer, but it was all Rams all day against the Texans. So we look now at the AFC South standings after Week 8, and it's Tennessee in command of the AFC South at the top of the division now, of course. After that win over the Colts, they have a sizable lead over Indy in uh, second place in the division. The Titans at 6-2, and two, Indy at 3-5. and five. The Jags at one and six, and Houston at one and seven. So six and two, three and five. That's first to second place. And we look at the upcoming schedules in weeks nine through thirteen for the AFC South. We know the Jags schedule ahead: Buffalo, Indy, San Fran. The Texans are at Miami by week at Tennessee. They're toast anyway. Indy, the Jets, the Jaguars, both at home. They're at Buffalo. That's a tough one. And then Tennessee at the Rams. What a game that'll be! And then. New Orleans and Houston both in Nashville. Those are the next three weeks. Now, the question, with without Derrick Henry, uh, Adrian Peterson, I guess, has been signed to the practice squad officially in Tennessee. Uh, you know, can Tennessee maintain this lead? Is this a, a lead too big to overcome for Indianapolis in the division, considering Derrick Henry might be done for a long time? Did you see the interception that Carson went through? I saw that. Not good, Coach. <laughs> because... Ooh. I guess... That's Woof. something that you would expect to see out of a rookie quarterback. It was terrible. <laughs> yes, it was. So, I mean, I look, I, I'd like to say that, hey, look, Tennessee with Derrick Henry, they're in trouble. But who's going to catch them? But are they? Yeah, I mean, they're in trouble, I think, a- after the season's over and the postseason without well, Derrick look, Henry. Here, here's you know? the reality. Derrick Henry is their offense. He is their entire offense. Are they capable of surviving without him? I think Tannehill's a good quarterback. Not a great quarterback, but he's a good quarterback. He's got some really good weapons when they're healthy. A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, tight ends are pretty solid. He's got a running back that can catch the ball out of the backfield. So can they survive? Yeah, I think they can survive. But they need to find somebody because that's their identity. Their identity is running the football. they got to find somebody that can replace some of the production of Derrick Henry. Can Adrian Peterson be that guy? I don't know. I mean, Adrian Peterson, is the last time I saw he was still a good back. Mm. But he's not Derrick Henry. I mean, he's like Derrick 55 Henry is, years old. He's as old as you are. Lux. Derrick Henry has bailed out that team on more occasions than – you can shake a stick at. I mean, he's that good. So, but yeah, can the Colts catch him? No. I mean, uh, look, I know that Frank Wright and Carson Wentz have a great relationship. <laughs> but that relationship didn't help Carson Wentz on that interception. Are you, I mean, seriously. Yeah. That was the worst. Inter- I mean, All right, it's, it's Trevor one, almost had one of them in Seattle now. I know, I know. I know. It's one play in one game, though. Bad decision. Bad decision by Carson Wentz, and, and Trevor's going to learn that you don't do that. I mean, he threw it up, you know, and you can't, you, you just can't do that. And uh, the Rams, thirty-eight to zip on the Texans. Yeah, right. Oh well, the Texans. You know, you know what they're saying right now. We well, you know we're really happy about our production. No, no, no. They stunk. in the fourth quarter. They were not good. You know, we got better in the fourth quarter. We scored twenty-two points in yeah, the fourth quarter. I'm sure that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. I know it's not. It, it's, and what do you, yeah. what do you, and what do you say to that? <laughs> I, Garbage I time. Yeah, I was going to say it. Garbage yeah, time. I, I can say a lot of things to that, but um, the, the, yeah, they're out of it. Uh, the Rams, though, of course, after that win, go out and trade for Von Miller, and they're going all in in a very competitive NFC West division. They feel like, hey, they got the quarterback now. Let's go get Von Miller, rent him for a couple of months, and see what happens. And they're all in in L.A. It's going to be interesting to watch. It will be interesting to watch. And you know what's also going to be interesting to listen to coming up is the Urban Meyer Show. In just about a minute or so, we'll hear from the Jaguars head coach, get his final thoughts on what happened in Seattle, and then look ahead to the Buffalo Bills. I'll guarantee you that he is not going to be a happy coach. I, You know, I don't know how he could be coming out of that game. Well, you can't be. I mean, you have... A terrible performance. And, you know, you got outplayed. And you got outcoached. Uh, it was not. A, it was not a good day. And so, 
not not a good day to have a coach's show when you have a game like that prior to. Well, we'll hear from Urban coming up in just a moment on the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. That'll do it for Jaguars Happy Hour. Thanks to Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber, Jeff Lagerman. I'm J.P. Shadrick, and this is the Jaguars Hard Rock Sportsbook Digital Network. Own this thing. It's ours. Come on, let's go. Duval County in 904. Let's own this stadium. Make it ours. Welcome to the Urban Meyer Show. Urban Meyer Show. Meyer Show. Former Jaguar Jeff Lagerman and J.P. Shadrick discuss the latest Jaguars news with the head coach. The Urban Meyer Show starts right now. And welcome into the Urban Meyer Show, heading into week number nine. J.P. Shadrick, Jaguars analyst Jeff Lagerman, and head coach Urban Meyer. We're recapping a week eight loss to the Seahawks and trying to get back on track. The Buffalo Bills come to town this week. We'll get to them coming up in just a little bit. Just a, an all-around tough day at the office up at Lumen Field this past Sunday. Offense struggled to stay on the field early. The defense couldn't slow down Geno Smith in that offense, and then the penalties crept back up again. Just a tough day, and and where do you begin when you look at the film on a game like this, Coach? Yeah, disappointing because we took a step back. You felt throughout the year so far we were taking, uh, actually in some positions, major steps forward. Offensively, you know, we felt up to this point there was steady progression. You look at Trevor Lawrence's numbers, his QB rating, his completion percentage, it was going up, up, up. Um, you know, just defensively, we were struggling a little bit against the pass, and uh, but the, I don't, I'm not sure where the heck these penalties came from. Uh, that that's not indicative of who we are and what we expect. If you look at the defense, we had I think six players that we felt played good enough to win the game. They held an offense to 220 uh, some yards, uh, three sacks, had a turnover, but it was negated by a penalty, and uh, the effort by the defense when you watch holding holding that group to. 60 some yards in the second half. I thought that was that was really uh, great to see that, uh, especially you know when he's talking about those two excellent receivers they had. So, offensively, a step back backwards, and first time this year, I think the special teams took a step backwards with the three penalties, and we weren't had some miscommunication on the kickoff return, and so we gotta we gotta uh, write this thing and get ready for the Bills. Urban, some of the uh, miscommunication or the penalties and you know, go to that category for a coach of mental errors. Hey, uh, it's got to be one of the most frustrating things that there is in football. How do you go about making sure that the attention to detail in those categories are taken care of so the mental errors don't happen? Well, it's ironic. It happened right after our self-scout meeting we had and had a great conversation with the leaders on our team about you know, third downs. We had eight drops, nine penalties in the first six games and and it can't have that those to me are like turnovers and then we have you know really could have been three delay a game penalties which, which is I don't know if the crowd got to our offense or the the noise or you know I, I that's just doesn't happen and then uh, on defense you had two roughing the passers that was you have to roll I guess when not I guess but you have to you can't fall on the quarterback and so I know we teach to, as you're going down and you know, I talked to both players, and they felt like they were already, you know, they they were trying and they couldn't do it. So it wasn't a late hit; it was the intentional, rough, uh, you know, roughing the passer because they landed on the quarterback. If you watch that closely, and then the offsides was that's late. That's not lazy. It's just lack of discipline, and uh, you can't have that three penalties on kicking game where you just get beaten. Uh, they didn't have the proper technique, and when you don't have proper technique, you use your hands. So. And then the the twelve men on the field penalty oh, on defense, gosh. Urban, and then the, they had to call the timeout. You you wanted that timeout later. That's that's something you just don't see a lot of on defense. No, you don't. And then uh, when you start talking about who who it was, you know they're they're much better than that. And uh, it happened twice. And that's when I went down to that side of the field. Like, what the heck? You know, what what are we doing here? And uh, we did have to burn a timeout, which you would like to have at the end of the first half. James Robinson gets hurt on the third offensive drive of the game, and this is obviously a major issue just because, I mean, I think he's your best offensive player, and he's such an important part of having balance on offense. One, how is he? And then number two, have you heard any prognosis on the situation with his foot? 
It's a bruised heel. Uh, I actually went down to saw him today. You can see it bleeding out. Um, you know, that's you can see it healing. And he's, you know, he is a tough cat, Jeff. You know that. And you know, I said, "What do you think?" And he said, "Oh, coach, I'll be good. I'll be good." And you know, they're they're giving us a questionable answer uh, if it'd be questionable for the game. But uh, I'm going to go back down here in a little bit and see him. And uh, you know, there's zero hesitation on that. He's an all-in player for us. You guys uh, were active with uh, the roster move this week. You claim Ozigbo off of waivers. Is that any indication of how long that James would be out? Or is that, hey, look, we have an opportunity to bring a guy back that we liked into the fold? Well, two reasons we did. First of all, have great respect for him, and we wanted him back. And then uh, Nick Sorensen, he's a good special teams player for us too. And so what happens is uh, you lose James if James is out, then elevates Carlos high, and then maybe Dare has to come off some special teams. So it's a domino effect throughout the roster. And we felt, you know, when you bring a guy and you have no idea, he doesn't understand our system, he's this, it's usually a 10-day window that you can get him ready. Ozigbo coming, he's a real smart player. Uh, we all love him, and uh, he's actually rolling in here at any time. Head coach Urban Meyer with us. Trevor Lawrence was forced to throw the ball 54 times. Yeah. So part of that circumstance of the game, three-score game at halftime, the second half as well, and then the running back is out also. That kind of changed the field. But, you know, how, when he has to handle something like that, we know his personality. He can go through some adversity and, and, and come out on the other end okay and a, a, a positive message in the postgame locker room and all that stuff. But you just don't want to see him throwing it 54 times in that scenario most weeks. Yeah, we're we're not built for that. If we're built for that, you don't mind. He certainly can do it. Uh, we just we don't have the depth at receiver, and you know, and the one thing we're lacking desperately is the speed and the big play hit. You know, we had two two plus runs, and I believe it was both James Robin uh, two plus explosive plays, and none in the pass game. And when we've played well, you've hit you know some guys downfield. The one guy is uh, Ags, and then the other guy is Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones has been our most consistent. We couldn't get get that uh, accomplished so that's a need in our organization right now is the downfield hit the explosive play you know that was one of the reasons why we took ETN so high is he is legitimately flat fast and a big play waiting to happen that's been his college career and he's out for the year so uh, that that's a, a, a if it's not need number one it's up there uh, Urban, it's tough to, to ask any quarterback to throw the ball 54 times in any game. And, and I think the one area that you're, you're not seeing, and you've talked about this in the past, about how you'd like to be able to find this component to your offense, and that's the vertical aspect to it. And we haven't seen much of that. Tyron Johnson was active in this past game, still didn't be able, still didn't have a whole lot of vertical element to the offense. How do you go about getting that back? Because that just also, it, it, by stretching the field, it makes – the window's bigger for a quarterback, I think, to explain it for people in just understandable terms. Well, you know, Eggs is the one guy that has the speed to run by people, um, you know, but we just haven't been able to get that accomplished. You know, we've uh, had a couple big plays, but like I said, a lot of them are back shoulder throws, great ball placement by Trevor. It hasn't been just running by people, and that's something we have to address. You know, Tyron is a guy that has the ability. It's just it's hard to get – that accomplished uh, for whatever reason. So that is, like I said, if it's not need number one, it certainly is up there. And, you know, I thought Dan Arnold with our little spread package that we had for him, uh, you know, but once again, those are all short. He has the vertical speed to help us too. So Lon, you know, it wasn't like it was on the game plan, and it certainly we called a few of them, but they were defended and you had to check the ball down. Uh, Dan Arnold, I thought, was uh, had a nice game. Uh, the one thing about Trevor that uh, I thought was kind of surprising, some of the throws that typically he would make look routine were a little bit off the mark. Is this just uh, an example or a sample of a quarterback just having an off day? I think so. You know, I, I had a talk with him, and, and obviously I've had a talk with our coaches who spend the, their meeting times with him, and, and, you know, you chalk it up to that. And unfortunately, sometimes that happens. Trevor, fortunately, doesn't happen very often. And, uh, you know, a couple of them are fourth down that we need to execute those plays, and the receiver's got to make the plays, and, and it didn't happen. When we return, we'll flip it around to the Jaguars' defense against the Seattle Seahawks' offense this past Sunday. And this is the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network.
Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F-150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F-Series is America's best-selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F-150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk. Checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk. Checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh, she's doing great. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> great job, honey! Oh. oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. And Jaguars game day broadcasts are presented by Vistar Credit Union. Welcome back to the Urban Meyer Show. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, and Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer. The Jags and the Bills coming up this Sunday at TIAA Bank Field. One final look back at the Seahawks game this past Sunday at Lumen Field. Geno Smith completed his first 14 passes of the game and had a career-high completion percentage of 83%. Davis came out of the gate throwing the ball all over the place. Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, uh, those were the names we talked about all week coming in, but those guys produced early against you. Yeah, produced early. Uh, I felt like, obviously, as the game wore on, we did much better against him, but Tyler Lockett really impressed me that, uh, well, he's one of the best in the league. Uh, You know, Tyson got, you know, actually halfway tight coverage, but he got behind him for a touchdown. And uh, DK made some catches as well. So uh, Geno Smith is a streaky player. He was certainly streaky in the first half. And and as a result, we went down by a couple scores right away. And uh, we had to match those scores, and we didn't do that. Now, Geno Smith, certainly a quarterback that hadn't been fantastic up until this game. He was averaging 15 uh, points a game as a starter. And so certainly a little surprising, but no surprise with those two guys, Metcalf in particular, because he's such a big, dominant physical presence, and you put Shaq Griffin on him at times when you matched up in man, and that's a heck of a matchup for anybody because this guy is a physical freak. Yeah, we played it mixed in a lot of zone, but uh, you know you kind of open up running lanes if you stick play zone too much, and then also they'll just pick you apart. A lot of the Geno's completions were just the underneath, underneath throws. A lot of them tire or lock it on those eight-yard little turn-ins. And then, you know, that's the problem with zone. Then you lock up in man, you expose yourself if that's a matchup issue for us. And, and I, we all believe Tyson Campbell. He's just having some rookie pains. He's very fast. He's athletic, coachable. Uh, we believe he's going to be a fine corner in the NFL. That's why we, that's why we draft him. That's why we're sticking with him. Uh, we believe Shaq Griffin is going to continue to improve as well. You talked last week extensively about how you're going to be more of a zone defense, and you kind of were making that transition anyway. How hard is it to teach? Because I think this is probably the hardest thing to learn sometimes is that when you play zone, you essentially try to match up with the guy that's in your zone. And so you're trying to teach the routes and the combination of routes to a defense, and that takes a little bit of an adjustment period. How is that going? Well, it's going good. The bye week helped, but it's also, like you said, Jeff, it is a time, it is an adjustment. And uh, the one thing that you know is fairly new to me is you you are so limited because of your roster, because it's the NFL. You know, you just have some older players. You just don't have that repetition opportunities 
uh, that you would have. But um, I felt like, you know, zone coverage was productive for us in that game. You are going to dink and duck, and there will be people complete balls on you. But if they keep it in front of you, that's not a lot of times, you know. And then also the one thing about zone coverage, Jeff, you you keep your face on the ball, and that you have a better chance of turnovers when you they dump the ball beneath you and you come – rally up and hit the guy and try to get the ball out. And the second thing is, if a ball ever gets tipped or is a missed throw, you can intercept it. And we had a nice interception, and that was a big field position swap. We would have had the ball on offense on the 40-yard line, and and uh, we didn't get that because of the offsides. One guy in particular that I thought played really well, and he's been playing well of late, Josh Allen. Two sacks, he had two tackles for losses. I love watching him, Urban, because he's got great awareness as far as finding the ball, and that's something I believe you can't coach because some guys either have it or they don't, and it's clear that Josh has it. And the thing we pushed real hard, and I thought uh, Roy uh, Robertson and uh, Malcolm and and, uh, Devon also pushed the pocket, so there wasn't a place to step up. If you noticed on a lot of the sacks, there was no place to go. And Josh been playing pretty consistent all year but we don't get the inside penetration then quarterbacks can step up and scramble and that's what you saw with Tua that's early in the year you saw Tyrod where they you know we we're out either out of lanes or we didn't get any vertical push by the in- interior guys so it's all it's all ties together I thought Smoot played his tail off too. Miles Jack returned to the lineup on defense and led the team in tackles last week. What did he bring to the equation? Him and Damian played two of their best games you know we uh we knocked the run out pretty good uh, once again, you hold a team to 67 yards in the second half. Uh, with those players they have, that was very good. I, you know, other than the first drive, two, uh, first two drives, I thought our defense might have played our best of the year. You know, you, you obviously you can't just say eliminate the penalties, but uh, as far as effort, as far as tackling, and as far as playing sound football, that last three quarters of the game, I thought they played great. At the end of the game, I uh, got to see that you had a chance to have a short chat with Pete Carroll. I mean, two guys that both of you have played or coached in the college level and now the pro level, and I'm sure it's always great to have a competitive game against a, a guy that uh, kind of has been the same path you have. Uh, what did you guys talk about, and uh, and how did that go? Uh, I've known Pete, Coach Carroll a long time, and, and I, I don't say we know each other well. Obviously, there's mutual respect across the – you know, across the United States, I'm on the one side, he was on the other, and, and uh, they were, you know, they were top of the uh, the food chain there at USC, then we took over at Florida and then at Ohio State, and uh, I just, uh, I've, I've respected him since the, you know, since when I first became head coach of Utah, so he does an excellent job, uh, he does it the right way, and he's a winner. We'll take a timeout and an early look at the Buffalo Bills coming up in week nine. This is the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union, do good, bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join, insured by NCUA. Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our Scrubbing Soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. 
And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And your roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. And this week's Bill's Jaguars game is presented by Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. And welcome back to the Urban Meyer Show. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman and Jaguars head coach Urban Meyer. The Bills among the top teams in the AFC coming in. They have the top defense in football. They have the top scoring offense in football with Josh Allen at the controls. And they're one of the best all-around teams, really, in the NFL, Coach. They are. Uh, they've been built very well. You know, I, I've been talking to Trent about that. You can tell that when you watch them play, they know the system. They they uh, draft and acquire talent to the system. You know, on, on defense, they're a legitimate 4-3 defense, and, and they're really good players all over the field. They're not overly complicated. They're just extremely well coached, and we all know this, this is about the – talent level of that team and that's what they got they have talent everywhere on offense you can tell they built this around josh allen he's a shotgun quarterback that uh, distributes the ball and he's big they run him i can't i can't believe how many times they just flat run him whether it be power whether it be a, a sweep with him and then a draw with him they, they flat run. i don't care what the score is uh, they're running him and uh you know I'm, uh, i have a history of running quarterbacks a little bit and we just don't you know <laughs> You know, Josh, or uh, not Josh, uh, Trevor is, you know, we were on a cue draw with him. He scored against uh, Tennessee, I believe it was, and then he scrambles a little bit. We're, we're trying to not put him in harm's way as, as much. Well, Josh Allen, and to, to talk about those numbers, I mean, he's got 52 carries on the season and he's averaging over five yards a carry. But what's been impressive about him, he's always been able to run. But in his fourth year, the jump that he made a couple years ago from early in his career to all of a sudden now, he became a legitimate top five quarterback in the National Football League has been nothing short of spectacular because not only does he have the running ability, but he's also got an, an absolute cannon for an arm. He does, but it's also consistency of system. And that's where, you know, they're doing a really good job uh, building it around them. And you can see the talent at receiver. And, uh, you know, they have very good offensive line. It's just – and we're working towards that, Jeff. That's something that, you know, we, we have to say consistent with system. That's not fair to quarterbacks. I, I've had quarterbacks – Alex Smith is a perfect example that was the number one overall pick, and he – within four years, I think, he was in three different systems. And then, all, you know, just no continuity. And that's where you admire guys like uh, Josh Allen, and not just Josh Allen, but that organization, the way they put this thing together. Yeah, general manager Brandon Bean was a guy who uh, came over from Carolina and has done a good job with the offensive line. He got weapons all along the outside and Cole Beasley, Beasley Stephon Diggs, and, and also Emmanuel Sanders, veteran guys at the wide receiving position. And when you have that kind of collection of talent, which you're referring to, it, it's a lot easier to have success. Uh, that's that's not exactly rocket science, but that's uh, it, it's it's on display when you watch this team play. And you know the Miami Dal- Dolphins; it was three three in the closing par- uh, seconds of the third quarter. So Miami came out and blitzed them and played zero coverage, a bunch against them, took away basically the spread game and forced them to, you know, and they had some free shots. This guy's a big guy too, Josh Allen, uh, the quarterback for the Bills. Uh, but it was, uh, and there was also 16-11 with uh, four minutes left in the game. The, the Dolphins were right there. So we'll have to play our best, uh, but I expect our guys to. Yeah, Josh Allen, 6'5", 237 pounds. Uh, let's go to defense now for the Bills. I mean, it's, it's one of the top units in the NFL. Pretty much any metric you want to use, yardage, they're number one in takeaways with 18 on the season, 15 sacks with 10 different players getting at least one sack this year. They've got veteran safeties on the back end. Every level has something to contend with here. Yeah, their left corner, uh, our left corner, our left or their right corner is uh, outstanding. And the other, it starts, they can play man coverage and they can, and so that frees up anytime you can say, I can take. Our guys and cover your guys. That 
frees up people. And when I say frees up people, it obviously frees up your front four, but you can send a guy now and then. You can send two guys now and then because you're very confident in the coverage aspect. You know, like last week against uh, Seattle, we just didn't feel that way. We didn't we didn't match up there. You know, someday we will and more experience. Uh, but this group just matches up very well against really everybody they play. The defensive coordinator, Leslie Frazier, also the assistant head coach in his title, is this a defense that's complicated, or is this a defense that because they have the talent, they're going to play you and they're just going to challenge you to beat them? Well, I never want to say they're not complicated. You know, Miami Dolphins were very complicated. They were all over the place, and that was part of their uh, scheme was to confuse an offense. I, I, I don't say that about this group. Now, once again, respectfully saying, of course, it's complicated. But what makes it complicated is they're very well coached, and they're very, I mean, excellent players at, like you said, all three levels. And uh, that's, i much rather face a complicated defense with lesser players than a, a very good de- scheme uh, with really well coached, great players that understand the, every defense has weaknesses. What are they? And they understand a very good, really, really a good defense. Head coach Urban Meyer with us. Final thought with you, coach. Coming back home, big ball game, Buffalo. They're all big ball games. I get that. The Buffalo Bills are coming in. It's a game this group needs. The Jaguars trying to get back off the deck after last week's game in Seattle. And and what's your confidence level? What's been the group? Um, what, what's the group been like? I guess coming off last week's game. This this group's so resilient. You know, I mean, it was it was off. You know, the the penalties and the, you get behind seventeen zip and offensively you were making such great strides. We took a step backwards, but uh, I got fighters in that locker room. We got fighters on our staff, and you know you you had momentum and we lost it. So we got to get that momentum back, and there's only one way to do that. Urban, good luck to you. Appreciate the time as always. We'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys. Head coach Urban Meyer with us. And back with more after this. It's the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. Hold on. You want me to tell them about Twisted Tea, Hard Iced Tea in just 30 seconds? This is impossible. Hey, I'm Billy from Twisted Tea. How can I explain that first sip of cold, smooth, real brewed tea? So good! And the extra kick you get from just the right amount of alcohol? (laughs) The twist of lemon, the... Wait, what? We're almost out of time? Oh, sh**. Twisted Tea, Hard Iced Tea. Look for the bright yellow cans wherever you buy beer. Twisted Tea Brewing Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Please drink responsibly. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh. She's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? <sighs> great job, honey. Oh. oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. (sighs) Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show rolls along. Our thanks to head coach Urban Meyer joining us in the first half hour each and every Tuesday afternoon at 5 o'clock. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman. The Urban Meyer Show rolling along. Eh, you know, it's a tough one, right? I mean, they come off of just a, a bad performance overall, and they got to kind of get off the deck here, as we said at the end. And hey, guess what? The Buffalo Bills are coming, and they don't really care what happened last week to the Jaguars here. No, and they're playing really well. They're, I mean, they're a really good football team. They've got a uh, quarterback who's scoring a lot of points. In fact, uh, first in the league in scoring. They've got the number one ranked defense in the National Football League. 
This is going to be a challenge. And, and the challenge, I think, with facing the Bills, their quarterback can do a lot of different things. He can run. Yeah. He can throw. Right. And when he does take off, he's a big man. 237, 6'4". Yeah, he's not, he's not going to get crushed. I mean, or, No. He's going to be doing the crushing. But I will say this. If he takes off and runs, you have to treat him like a running back. you got to hammer him. I mean, that's look, if you become a runner, you got to treat him like a runner. But it's, he's good. What's impressive, I think, about him, when he came out, you remember Jalen Ramsey calling him trash? I do. How can you forget that? Of course. <laughs> yeah. What is Jalen look well, like? Uh, a, he, Jalen looks as dumb in that situation as I do calling Gino a garbage quarterback, and then he look, lights the Jaguars defense up in Seattle. <laughs> but no, seriously, <laughs> Josh Allen, look, and looking at his numbers, and I'm just going to give you a sample. In the completion percentage category, his rookie year, he was 52.8. Okay, that's not good. Second year, 58.8. A little improvement. Still not great. Last year, 69.2. Uh, that'll, that dog will hunt. That's big time. And then this year, he's 65. So a guy that's improved every year in the completion percentage category, for the most part. Now, this year, it's not quite where it was oh, at man. last year. Yeah. Okay. Let me just give you another category. Oh, can't wait. Okay, the interception percentage. Okay, rookie year, 3.8%. Second year, 2%. Last year, 1.7%. percent throw a few interceptions. This yeah. year, 1.1%. Yeah, more touchdowns, protecting fewer interceptions. The ball. Yeah, that's right. He's Better protecting decisions. protecting the ball. Better His rating made. has gone up every year. Well, this sure. year, it's a little bit off of what it was last year, but... This is the trajectory. The trajectory that Josh Allen has taken is what you hope Trevor Lawrence can take when you know he gets into the rest of this year, then next year, and the year after that. You hope that he can continue to get better, and he's a legitimate threat to run. I don't want Trevor to be a legitimate threat to run like Josh Allen. I don't. No. Different kind of style, different feel, I, I, different body type, the whole thing. Right. The hit that Trevor took in the game – from Jamal Adams. Did yeah, you remember that? I do remember that. Don't need that. That was scary now. <laughs> Don't need that. Because it was no. he took the hit and almost didn't even really see Jamal Adams. And when a quarterback gets hit in the legs and they're not expecting to get hit or anybody's not expecting to get hit, that's when it can be scary. And it and it kind of turned that leg in a little bit and I was like, oh my God, what are you doing? Got to learn to slide, you know, and his wife's telling him to, he needs to slide better. <laughs> I'm like, listen to your wife. Marissa knows what she's talking about. Trevor, come on. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, they got out of it, and we'll see moving ahead if the offense can get something going this week against uh, a really tough Bills defense. We'll break that down a little bit later coming up also. But uh, let's come back in a moment. We'll, we'll touch on this offense uh, and the, the, for the Jaguars. And what they might be able to do to jumpstart things. I, don't, I mean, Logs, I'm going to leave this to you when we come back. I'm going to listen to any suggestion, JP, that you may have. I'll throw th some things at the wall and see what sticks here. Why coming not? Up. How about that? Why not? This is the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. At ViStar Credit Union, you inspire us to deliver on our promise to do good for our members and our communities. That's why we offer more banking options, like better rates and no hidden fees. We also give back, donating several million dollars to hundreds of nonprofits each year. Better financial lives, stronger communities. ViStar Credit Union, do good, bank better. Visit ViStarCU.org slash join, insured by NCUA. 
Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Jags fans, did you know you can ride your bike to every Jaguars home game at TIAA Bank Field in Valley Park it for free? That's right. Stop by our bicycle check-in tent sponsored by Alert Today Florida near Gate 1 at TIAA Bank Field. An on-duty Zencog bike professional will park your bike and ensure it's secure during the game. When the game is over, return your claim ticket to pick up your bike. For cycling safety tips, visit alerttodayflorida.com. Remember, alert today, alive tomorrow. Because safety doesn't happen by accident. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Welcome back. It's the Urban Meyer Show. J.P. Shadrick, Jaguars analyst Jeff Lagerman, head coach Urban Meyer, joins us in the first half hour every Tuesday, 5 o'clock here on the Jaguars radio network. Glad you're along with us, recapping the Jaguars' loss to the Seahawks in Week 8. And now it's on to the Buffalo Bills in Week 9. The top team in the AFC coming to TIAA Bank Field this week. We're going through the... Jaguars' offensive performance last week. James Robinson gets banged up. You heard Urban Meyer say, you know, he's kind of questionable right now for the game. This Sunday, they were like draining the the heel, and that, that was a lot going on with James Robinson. Um, he said they were draining the heel. That's what he said. Yeah, but that's I, what he told us. I didn't interpret that like they were sticking a needle in there to drain the heel, and maybe that's what he's saying happened. But a lot of times when you get a bruise – the blood kind of drains down, pools into the bottom of the foot or bottom of an extremity, and it can be discolored. I don't know if he was referring Ugh. to that. Ugh. I don't know if he was necessarily referring to actually a medical he procedure said. of it being drained. I don't know. But either way, uh, it's day-to-day, aren't we all? But uh, James Robinson certainly is with the, the heel issue. It changed the way the offense felt in that game. Without Robinson in there, you're five and a half yard a carry guy. You know, what do you do? Carlos Hyde is a four and a half yard a carry guy. Much smaller sample size though this season, and he kind of had to to play the the remainder of the game. You know, I mean, your leading receivers the other day were Dan Arnold, who's been here for what a month. Yeah, he's been pretty good. Uh, he's been fine, but he's been here a month. Carlos Hyde has been a backup running back. He's he had six catches for forty yards. Jamal Agnew played corner two years ago. He had six catches for 38 yards. So the guys you really thought you were going to count on, Marvin Jones, LaVisca Chenault, you know, Robinson's banged up. I mean, those guys are down the list a little bit. I mean, they were they threw the ball to Agnew 12 times. Well, and, and he had six catches. So I mean, and that's been that was they leading into the game, hey, Agnew's kind of our deep guy. He's the separator on offense and Yeah, but we don't see him running deep a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, does he have speed to where he can separate and run deep? Sure, but I don't. You don't see him going deep a lot, and that's. And, I think, and he's played wide receiver for two years. Like you're going to load him up already? Well, look, I don't he's know. he's he's good. I mean, look, there's nothing wrong with with throwing him the football at all. In okay. the last two games, he's got 11 catches, I think 90, 92 yards, and a touchdown. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, is it great? No, I mean, you want to have. Somebody, if they have elite speed and they're a vertical threat, you want to have them in that 15, 14, 15 yards per catch range, and that's obviously not in that range. But is he not the only one that looks different when he catches the ball? Like like the excitement that starts once the catch is made, yards after catch, and that's something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to find out what the numbers are. He probably has more yards per catch on average than any of the other Jaguars wide receivers. LaVisca had that one that he just, you know, looked like uh, Marshawn Lynch a few games ago where he was getting breaking tackles and going down the field and all that kind of stuff. But right. consistently after the catch, Jamal Agnew has been the best, I think, just from the eye test. Here's one for you. 
LaVisca Chenault, four targets. I think most of those were in the second half of the game. Two catches, 13 yards. You know, his long was seven yards in the game. He had a carry in the game where they kind of did a From a, the backfield. That's and what I was expecting him then, to do this and then year. ran around right tackle there the other way, kind of a counter play. You know, would, would you line him up back there more? You get him in motion like they had done in the past? What do you do with LaVisca Chenault now? Exactly what you did with him last year. Seriously. I thought the coaching staff did a really good job with LaVisca last year. This this coaching staff has wanted to try to make him more of a true wide receiver. I don't know if that's necessarily his his best role. I think it, it's a hybrid role that is what he would be best served doing because he can run the ball just like a running back. He can play in the box area and be uh, like a – like a power four type tight end, okay? And he's big enough, he can block linebackers. I mean, he's 200 and... He's 227 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's like yeah. 230 and yoked. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the guy's, yeah. you, know, you know, he's he's big, strong, powerful, very good blocker. And I, I think that that's where he needs to make his living, is in that in that tight area where the tight ends typically work and then also as a, as a running back. Because I think he's got to... He's, I don't think. He has a very unique skill set. I mean, he really does. And if you treat him just like a pure wide receiver, I think you're making a mistake. And I was, it was good to see that Daryl Bevel used him as a running back in the backfield last week. I liked it. Because they did that, especially early last season. They, well, that's the first time they, we saw it this actually, year. They actually lined him up at running back last right. year some. This was like in motion and then handoff and then move. Right, right. Whatever. Either way. Whatever works. I, I, and that's something that, uh, that I think he can do. And here, here's the other thing. If you are not going to have James Robinson for a week or two or whatever, then why not have some plays for LaVisca kind of in that role? You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, yeah. See what I'm saying? I got you. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear you. I, okay, well, that's that, that's what we have on offense right now. Those are the leading receivers on offense right now. Well, Marvin Jones is Mr. Reliable. Boy, he did he, but Mr. Reliable, touch. he had a drop. I know, on normally he is, but he's been the guy that you kind of throw to in Lena. He's that's a veteran. How, that's but, how that game went, JP. That's what I'm saying. I mean, even Mr. Reliable had a right. drop. And right. it was a... It was a play, and I can't remember the distance, but it was third and really long. It might have been 14, 15. That doesn't really narrow it down, but yes. It was third and incredibly long. <laughs> that narrows it down. Third and Tacoma. And it hit him right in the hands. And here's the thing. Trevor got hit in the mouth. I mean, not literally, but like, bam. He gets hit as he's thrown. He's like yeah. literally getting falling away as the arm is going forward and finishing the throw, and he, and he throws a dime. While getting hit, and Marvin comes around to the break, and then it hits him right in two hands, mm. and it goes down. And it's just like, that's the kind of day that this team is having. Let's warm up the plane. Come on back. Uh, we'll come back in just a moment and flip it around to defense. We talked about Josh Allen for the Bills. Let's talk about Josh Allen for the Jags. All right, what, one other thing, too, JP, uh, and, and I wanted to mention this. It was a very long flight. Oh. To Seattle. Well, yeah. Right? Sure. And uh, it was pretty cool. And it was just personal experience here because, you know, as of getting on the flight to go from Atlanta to Seattle on Saturday, this has nothing to do with the game. Is this a long story? No, it's not long. Okay. It's not incredibly long. We're about to get a, you know, I don't know. We suck it up. We <laughs> go tell the story then. Let's go. I will if you just stop I mean, talking. just quit talking. Just tell the story. So as I'm waiting to get on the plane, you know, they ask if anybody needs assistance or extra time getting on the plane, please, please come forward. And then after that... And I appreciate this. The airline asked if there's any active military. They board them next. And there was 25 plus, maybe 30 servicemen and women getting on that plane to go to Seattle because I guess that they then depart Seattle to go to other places overseas. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to thank them for their service. And I think that that's really cool that the airlines do that to give them the privilege and thank them for their service by letting them board the plane first. Just wanted to say that. I thought it was really cool. There you go. Well done. This is the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network.
Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's been around longer than your quarterback. When you put it on, everyone knows it's game time. So legendary, it deserves its own Hall of Fame. Members only jackets, undeniable quality and style for over 45 years. Scratch and claw your way over to membersonly.com. Get ready for football season with a jacket that can only be summed up in one word, iconic. Use discount code JAGUARS at checkout for 35% off on all iconic racer jackets. Members only, when you put it on, something happens. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk. Checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk. Checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. Pinpoint, the official signage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, helps business decision makers like you maximize the impact of their brand. Your company's identification, advertising, and even the words you use make an impression on your clients. With Pinpoint as your coach, you can make sure it's a good impression. Pinpoint provides the creative design and production services for anything you need to enhance your brand, from custom signage to complete marketing solutions. Step up your game with Pinpoint and create the ultimate brand experience for your clients. Visit experiencepinpoint.com. Hard Rock Sportsbook is coming to Florida. Join the Seminole Tribe of Florida and Hard Rock for safe, trusted, and completely legal sports betting. Go to hardrocksportsbook.com to get all the latest details leading up to launch. Play remotely from anywhere in Florida, including on your phone or computer or in person at Seminole Casinos. Want great promotions like free bets, odds boosts, and bonuses? Hard Rock Sportsbook will have all your favorite bets and promotions. Hard Rock Sportsbook, the best place to be a Jaguars fan. Coming soon. Must be at least 21 and physically present in Florida to wager. Concerned about gambling? Please call 1-800-522. 4700. Great teams leave it all on the field. But with the powerful towing and payload that Ford F 150 delivers, you can take it all with you, too. No wonder Ford F Series is America's best selling truck 44 years straight. The 2021 Ford F 150. Built for greatness. Visit your local Ford dealer or buyfordnow.com. Based on 1977 to 2020 calendar year total sales. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. We're back. The Urban Meyer Show continues. The Daily's Place schedule starting to lighten up a little bit for the fall. Only a couple shows left on the schedule. Kane Brown, two nights, November 12th and 13th. That's what, 10 days away from now. Friday and Saturday. Tickets at dailiesplace.com. These shows were scheduled uh, earlier. They have been rescheduled, and here they are. So uh, check them out. Great uh, lineup of shows this year at Daily's Place. Cramming them all in there. All these bands are back on the road again, and um, it's been it's been a fun run. So uh, your last chance coming up in about a week and a half. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman, head coach Urban Meyer with us in the first half hour each Tuesday, 5 o'clock on the Jaguars Radio Network on the Urban Meyer Show. Jaguars defense, you know, you look through the individual numbers from last week's game. Miles Jack was back in the lineup. Logs had nine tackles, led the way, one tackle for loss. Josh Allen seemed to have at least statistically the biggest impact. Six tackles, two sacks, four tackles for loss. Did it equate on film when you watched it for Josh Uh, Allen? Yeah, I mean, he was – Josh Josh was great. I mean, literally, Josh was – clearly the best defensive player on the field for the Jaguars. And there wasn't – it's not even a, a conversation to or have an argument that somebody else could maybe be better. That's how, how good Josh was. I mean, it's – if you look over the last four or five games, at four or five weeks, not games, so that'd be like four games, Josh has been fantastic. I mean, literally fantastic. He's winning in the pass rush. He is aware in the running game. He 
has, uh, I think, the awareness to identify, diagnose, and then he has the physical attributes to where he can make plays. And that's that's the beauty of him. He's a smart player that has great physical attributes. And when you combine the two, you have a you have a, a potential player that can be great. And I think that he is one of those players. The problem is, is that you need more of him. You know, I mean, at different positions, yeah, yeah. not just you know, like outside multiple linebackers. Josh Allen's. Yes, that would be nice. You know, as good as he's playing, you sit there and you go, okay, well, where's the next guy that's playing good with him? Well, you know, Urban talked about Malcolm Brown and uh, Roy Robertson Harris playing better and getting some push. I mean, yeah, kind of, but not enough to, to affect the game. Hmm. And so it's not good enough. Caleb on Chazon had a costly offside penalty at a critical moment of the game. Huge, yeah. And uh, hadn't had, and he did not have a lot of impact in that game, and he hasn't had a lot of impact this year. So it, it's, you know, Josh Allen is a really good football player, and he's got to keep trying to do his best, keep playing hard, and he's got to continue to lead because he is one of the leaders on this defense, and he's got to continue to demand more. Now, Urban also said that Damian uh, – Wilson and then also Miles Jack had arguably their best games. I mean, I thought they were good, but it wasn't great. And because here's the thing Seattle scored 20, 24 points on your defense. Correct. I don't think you can say that anybody had a great game. I mean, Josh had a great game because statistics, you can't, you can't, you can't sit there and ignore that. I mean, the statistics themselves say that he had a great game. But anybody else, when you allow 24 points, no. That's what happened. That's what happened in the game. Oh, by the way, you know, uh, he, it's the third year in the league, and, and Josh Allen missed half of last season with a knee issue. But, you know, he had 44 tackles in his rookie year. He's at 31 right now. So he's got, what, 13 to tie that, 14 to have a new career best single season tackle mark. So the, he's playing the best more. Play, and, the best you know, play that he made. Veteran player. Yeah. He probably made in the game. And, and tomorrow night, we're actually going to look this in Jags Ward. Well, ah. well We'll look at the second sack that he made, and it was on a TE, not a tight end, TE, which is a, it's a pass rush game, and it worked out really good. What and, does that mean, TE? In, in pass rush terminology, it's a game where you twist. So the tackle goes up the field, and then the end goes up the field and then plants his foot and then loops underneath. Comes inside. So the, the tackle goes up the field, the end comes inside underneath him. Right, and okay. then an ET – Okay, would be the tackle the, goes outside after the end goes underneath, underneath first. First, got it. The, the first letter doing the moving. And football is very difficult to understand. Okay, <laughs> et end first tackle second. Yeah, te yeah. tackle first up the field and the looping underneath. It's a lot to keep up with. Yeah, I mean, like, for, especially for defensive players. According to Peyton Manning, they don't know what, what's just going like on. You get a defensive. You know, so let's say two guys are. Let's word word work. We're teammates. We are. You're the defensive tackle. Yes, I am. Because you're built like I am one. stout. Okay? I'm the end. Okay, and I go, JP, we're on the same side, right? Yeah, you're no. the tackle, I'm okay, the end. Okay, I'm, yeah. Ted, Ted, what's it going to be? Okay, that's a TE probably. Exactly. See? Okay. Okay, do you think the offensive lineman might figure that out? Maybe. If they I got, don't know. <laughs> that's the thing they think. Sometimes they think that they, that they won't. All right, T- JP, we're on the same side again. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. I'm going to guess, you know, and this is just me guessing, that the end is going to go first. On exactly. That. It's the first, I got first it. letter. All right. It's the first I letter. can play defensive line. Yeah, it's the first letter. That's all I need. Oh. can outsmart the other team. Good luck. I won't out-push them. I'll it's say funny, that. too, because like offensive lines, when they're in a game, they'll, they'll go, Liz, 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 Liz. What do you think that is? I, I think it, the play's going left. It's slide protection left. Yeah. Riggin, riggin, riggin. Slide protection L and right. R. I mean, you're really, you're spilling a lot of secrets. Lucy, Roger. I don't know if teams left, would really right. be comfortable with you, like, spilling all the secrets out there. No, it's just, it's, it's just funny how, mm. you know, baseball at least has signals that are very difficult to figure out. But in football, some of the, the, the secret terminology... It's not so secret. It ain't so secret. <laughs> Just got to pay attention. <laughs> yeah. And, that, and here's what teams do. This is serious. Mm-hmm. Teams get the TV copy mm-hmm. 
because they want to evaluate the audio component from you? the TV copy. Sure. So you got to change so that, that every week. Well, so you can get all the adjustments in the calls. Yeah. So you add, and then here's the thing: once it's you, once you've identified what this secret terminology is mm. on, let's say, an offensive coordinator, and his name is let's say Joe Brown, just because we're using a generic name. Okay. Okay, we've got his terminology down. So we keep a book. Okay, Howie Long used to do this as a player. Yes, he did. And he he writes notes down on the Joe Brown page, and he's writing down all the calls. Okay, then when Joe Brown gets fired, and then he gets rehired into another city, guess what Howie Long used to break out? There you go, the Joe he Brown book. He used to break book. out his Joe Brown book. There it is. Because the calls would all move with Joe Brown. Mm-hmm. So there's the secret. There, there, there it is. The, the key is There's you got to the play long enough to get a book. Oh, yeah. that, yeah. I mean, that's the that's also part of the challenge. PRI Productions, the Southeast full-service event company, has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIproductions.com and learn more. Our final thoughts coming up. It's the Urban Meyer Show on Jaguars Radio. On the road, there's a thin line between safety and tragedy. Don't cross it. Give law enforcement, first responders, and service professionals the space to safely do their jobs. When you see flashing lights, move over a lane or slow down 20 miles per hour below the posted speed limit. See lights? Move over, Florida. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles and the Florida Highway Patrol. Fans like you have been told that going all out is going too far. But fans like you know better. You're the kind of fan who loves the team as much as your pet who paints yourself for game days and dyes your pet's fur to match. You are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic, equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise, it's a new day in pet care. You expect Jags fans to say, Duval! You expect the beer stadium's going to be cold, the dogs will be hot, but what you don't expect is an airport hotel with a renovated inviting lobby, a cool bar, and crowded restaurant, or 10,000 square feet of space just waiting for your next family or business event. At the Crown Plaza Jacksonville Airport, you should always expect to be surprised. Book online or call 1-877-2-CROWN. That's 1-877-227-6963. At Tropical Smoothie Cafe, one taste and you're feeling good now, smiling wider now, seeing brighter now, bucket dunking now, namaste in now, popping a wheelie now, living lighter now. You're on Tropic Time now. And on Mondays, try our Jaguars Duval Delight Smoothies for $2.99. And you're roaring louder now, end zone dancing now, sipping spirit now. You're on Tropic Time now at Tropical Smoothie Cafe. It's not kickoff without the small places that make Jaguars game day big. That's why Crown Royal is turning game day into giving day by supporting communities that serve us off the field. Nominate a local community hero to win the ultimate Jaguars game day experience at jaguars.com slash crown royal promotion. Because Crown Royal believes if you live generously, life will treat you royally. Visit crownroyal.com. Please drink responsibly. Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our Scrubbing Soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. Welcome back. The Urban Meyer Show continues along the Jaguars radio network. Yes, it does. Final moments of the Urban Meyer Show. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman, Joe Fortunato, Brent Reber on the back end today. And uh, glad you're along with us. The Jaguars and the Bills coming up in week nine. And we learned a lot about defensive TEs, ETs there. What else let me you got? Give, let me give you we got about you a minute. Real quick. Yeah. Snap counts. Oh, gosh. Are we going to jump full start here or what? Okay. Uh, Monday. 
What would Monday be? That's uh, probably That'd on be one. one. On one, first day of the week. Okay. okay. What about Wednesday? On three. Okay. Thursday. Uh, we're getting deep in the week now. That's probably four. Four, four right? Okay. On four, there's four red, sounds. Red, red, red. That's Wednesday. Red. Oh, red. I don't know. What? Red, white, and blue. One, two, three. Oh, wow. Okay. And other offenses will do. Okay. 122. 122. Okay, they give you that. They snap it on two the next time they're up. They say, 321, 321, and they snap it on two. What's the snap count? I don't know. I'm, it's always a middle number. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm playing defense. That's all but, I know. It's one of those three numbers is I'm, the snap count. So once you figure out which one it is, you're golden the rest of the game. I'll Jake. stick to defense. That's Jeff Logan. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm Red, White, Shadrick. Blue. It's the Urban Meyer Show on the Jaguars Radio Network. <laughs>